evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer on Sunday the 30th of May, Trinity Sunday. Our reading this evening is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, and will be read by Carolyn. Our prayers are being led by Jill Noble. And our psalm is Psalm 104, verses 1 to 9. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his Holy Spirit and raise you to life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and from our minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 104 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honour and majesty wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. Fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. 
you set a boundary that they that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen the magnificat my soul proclaims the greatness of the lord my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And we now hear Carolyn read our Gospel reading. Today's reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs that you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a womb the second time to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell from where it comes or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then? Will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Throughout the month of May, traditional dancing, known as Morris dancing, can be seen in many parts of the country. And every May Day since I can remember, 
Morris dancers have performed outside the plough in at Shustoke. And dancing is perhaps an unusual topic for a sermon. But I would suggest that on this Trinity Sunday, that dancing has something to teach us about the nature and the life of God. It may sound strange, but to think about dancing can help us to break through those sometimes densely intellectual attempts to explain the Trinity and offer us a fresh glimpse of what it's all about. And there are three things about dancing which might help us as we consider who God is and what God is like. First, dancing brings joy and life. The idea of the Trinity can offer make us switch off because it might be boring and difficult. It seems just like a static concept. But the Trinity is not really like that. It's about energy, life, joy, colour and movement. It's about the God who created this beautiful earth out of nothing, exploded it into being with every particle, every detail, intricately worked and lovingly made. It's about the God who loved what had been made so much that he sent his son to restore all that was broken and damaged and to bring it back to life again. It's about the God who longs to go on bringing joy and life and energy to his creation and who gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church so we can bring that same life to God's world in our day-to-day -day lives. It's about the God who dances for us, with us and in us and who helps us to dance for him. Dancing brings joy and life. Secondly, dancing means facing inward. Many dances require us to face each other, whether that be Morris dancing or barn dances, waltzes or a long, slow, smoochy dance in the twilight. And we need to look out for one another as we dance to make sure we don't tread on each other's toes that we're moving in tune and moving in time. Dancing is a together sort of activity where how we work well in harmony makes a huge difference to the dance. We rarely think about what the internal life of the Trinity might be like. But if you remember all those occasions, particularly in John's Gospel, when Jesus talks about his Father and the Spirit, it soon becomes apparent that the Trinity has an inward life of its own. And our Gospel reading this morning offers us a glimpse of that inward life. And what we learn is that it's about the God who is himself in relationship, Father with Son and Spirit, Son with Father and Spirit, Spirit with Father and Son. They're all connected and joined. They work together. We might say that they dance together. When he was on earth, Jesus would go to a quiet place to pray to the Father. The Spirit came upon him at his baptism in the form of a dove. So Father, Son and Spirit are interwoven, interconnected, just like people when they dance. Except, of course, for that gruelling moment on the cross when Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the relationship is broken. 
the dance comes to a stop. That is, of course, until God raises Jesus from the dead and the dance can begin again. Thirdly, dancing means facing outwards. In lots of dances, the dancers twirl round and around. Sometimes they run in and out of a circle. Sometimes they join hands and face outwards. And the dance is happening so that others can see and enjoy it, even if they're not part of the dance yet. And some dances are progressive, so that somebody who hasn't been part of the dance is brought in, is invited to join in and invited to participate, to become part of the dance with everyone else. The Trinity, for most of us, can seem like a closed shop. Distant or other, incomprehensible and out of bounds. But in truth, the Trinity is always looking outwards, always longing to draw others in, so that they too can be caught up in the joy and life and the love of the dance of God himself. Dancing brings joy and life. Dancing means facing inwards. Dancing means facing outwards. And the dancing trinity not only invites us to join in the dance with him, but he also invites us to dance for his world, to bring joy and life to others. To face inward so that our relationships in our church community reflect the life of God himself. To face outwards so that we can draw others in and to help them catch the rhythm and discover the fun. Amen. The Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen thy salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And Jill will now lead us in our prayers. We pray to God our Father, through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your creation of the universe, especially for the creation of the earth, with its beauty, power and might. For the glories of nature that so many will have had more time to appreciate over the last year. Those walking, cycling, gardening, seeing the turn of the seasons, the birds and wildlife, even if only from a window. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church and for the church worldwide, for all those worshipping you today, Trinity Sunday, in their churches or in their homes, 
sharing in virtual worship via the TV or the internet. We pray for all those clergy leading worship in churches full of your love and of the Holy Spirit, for congregations spread far and wide, for families and for individuals. We pray for all those taking part in worship today, perhaps for the first time in a long time, perhaps for the first time ever, for those seeking direction in their lives, for those new in faith, for those for whom Sunday is sacrosanct. We thank you for being here with us, walking alongside us, carrying us, holding us together as a church, however difficult the circumstances. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, especially those areas that are not at peace, where there is war, terrorism, injustice, inequality, hatred and fear. We pray for all those countries affected by COVID, those where numbers are increasing again. We pray that world leaders may make the right decisions, that all may behave responsibly in this worldwide fight against this virus. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who need our prayers, all those struggling in body, mind or spirit. May they feel your presence with them, bringing light and love into their darkness. In a moment's silence, we remember all those known to us who need our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for lives well lived and faithful souls who have joined you in heaven this week for eternal rest. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for today, Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in singing a blessing to one another with the words of our Vesper. May God's blessing surround you each day as you trust Him and walk in His way. May His presence within God.
God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. May God's blessing surround you tonight as you trust Him and walk in His light. May His presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in